Hey YouTube, welcome back for part two of my series on how to position and hunt showdown. In this video, I'm going to build on the strategic positioning principles we talked about in part one and get into some tactical strats that will make you more deadly in fights. Now this tactical section is going to be more rigid than how I explained the strategic portion. A couple of reasons for this. One, there's a lot more tangible ideas you can establish when thinking about tactics and hunt. Two, due to the sheer intensity of engagements, it is just better to have hard and fast strats to commit to rather than wasting time to consider complicated metagames. So the strats that I'm going to be outlining here are going to be clear, understandable, and readily available so you can whip them out and start slapping other hunters. Please remember that these strats are simply my opinion. Don't take them as hard and fast rules on how to play the game. There are thousands of ways to approach tactics and hunt, and I'm excited to see if you agree or even disagree with what I've outlined here. So feel free to let me know in the comments below. At the very least, I hope you find something helpful that increases your chances of winning and will make you more successful in your next outing into the bayou. All right, let's get into it. Strat number one, engage when you have the advantage and disengage when you don't. Before you're ready to start engaging the enemy, make sure you've done your strategic positioning and you've secured as many advantages as possible before you get into a fight. Hopefully you have a good ambush set up, you've placed traps that will allow you to secure an initial kill, or you're approaching your enemy from a high ground position. However you decide to engage the enemy, just make sure that it's going to turn out better for you than it would have if you'd taken another approach. Equally important is to know when to disengage from a fight that is just not going your way. One of the hardest things to do and hunt for some hunters is to admit that the best thing to do is to pull back and to try something else. To some, this feels like admitting failure, but it really isn't. Do yourself a favor. If a fight is not going your way, get out of there and reset in a more advantageous position. Courage in the face of an enemy is an admirable quality, but there's a fine line between courage and stupidity. Know where that is for yourself. There are several tools that can help you break contact and hunt. Dynamite, grenades, and hive bombs are excellent ways to create some space to get you out of a tough situation. And traits like Greyhound or consumables like the Stamina Shot will allow you to create even more space once you have broken contact. Strat number two, always maintain the high ground. All right, I know I said before that you should not take any of these strats as hard and fast rules on how to play hunt, but if there was any on this list which would come close to being a hard rule, it's gonna be this one. Maintaining the high ground is the most important thing you can do in any firefight in any compound or area in hunt. Of course, you know this by now. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! The high ground gives you two main advantages, vision and protection. On high ground, you can see so much of the battlefield that you can control the flow of the fight, deny enemy movement into key areas, keep enemies pinned while your teammates maneuver into flanking positions, and gather essential information to relay to your team on enemy positions, intentions, and descriptions. You can also use high ground to pull off some big plays when going in for the final strike on an enemy team. High ground also offers you better cover and protection from enemy fire and grenades. When fighting from high ground, you only need to expose your upper body and head in order to fire at the enemy. You can also keep changing your position of fire to keep the enemy guessing from where you will fire from next. If you do happen to get tapped in the head, you are most likely an easy revive for your teammates. Also, because of this handy thing called gravity, you can rain down sweet hell on your foes from on high with grenades and hellfire if you choose. Conversely, you are also better protected from throwables as landing grenades on top of buildings is much more difficult from a low ground position. Oh God! Oh, no, run away from my body, run away from my body! Okay, now it's safe, now it's safe. Now it's not safe, run away, run away! That's safe. Now it's not safe, run away, oh my god. Okay, now it's safe. You ready? Hey, honey, stop kicking my hey, desk. Got fucking Holy money. shit. They're, they're trying to get up there, dude. As well, even if a grenade does manage to land on high ground, you will most likely have a lot of space that you can retreat to behind you. Every compound has high ground positions you should be looking to control or deny. Some are better than others, but all have them. You should be learning these as quickly as possible if you don't know them already. It is important to keep in mind, however, that you need to be ready to give up the high ground if necessary. 
High ground spots can quickly become death traps if you let the enemy get too close. You can also trap yourself on high ground if you place Concertina in the wrong spot. High ground positions are easy to indicate for enemy teams, and experienced teams will know all the spots to look for. So be aware that after you give your position away on high ground, everyone is probably looking in your direction, and take care of where and when you peek to lay down fire. Having the kite skin trait is also very helpful if you need to make a quick descent. The complete opposite of high ground in Hunt Showdown is, well, under a house. Don't go under houses in Hunt Showdown. At some compounds in Hunt, there are crawl spaces where you can go into. These are death traps, and you should only be used as a last resort if every option fails. Yeah, just avoid them. Strat number three, use a fire base. Okay, so this is gonna be super counterintuitive to a lot of sweaty shooter tryhards out there, but sometimes in Hunt, your job is not to get kills. Yeah, I know, this sounds weird. Most of the time in Hunt, fights start out with something like this. People start shooting at each other from covered positions or out in the open. Somebody eventually gets tagged or is either killed, and that team with the casualty has to take cover. At this point, the team with the down player or the healing player has lost the initiative, and there's an opportunity for the other team to go on the offensive. When this happens, one part of the team that is on the offensive, be it a single member in duos or one or two players in trios, should form what I'm going to call, from now on, a firebase. Firebase has two main jobs. Maintain the initiative and to not die. Maintaining the initiative does not mean that you run out and start trying to get more kills or charge right towards the enemy in a melee charge of destiny. Okay, dude. Like, what the fuck was that? Okay. No, their job is to keep the enemy occupied, in cover, or cover a downed enemy hunter while the rest of their team flanks. Sound is key in Hunt, and fire bases can provide a huge advantage to their team by keeping the enemy's attention and covering their allies' approach with gunfire. It's really important that those players in a fire base do not die, as this would shift the initiative back to the enemy. So when firing at the enemy from a fire base, prioritize giving your flanking elements time to get in position and staying alive over hitting your shots. This means that peeking and firing quick shots that are int more intended to distract than to kill should be your priority. Once your flanking element is in position, feel free to go on the offensive again and help them mop up the rest of the enemy team. Strat number four, flank rapidly and aggressively. Once you have a fire base established, it's time to flank. Flanking is the riskiest maneuver you can do in Hunt. Flanking exposes you to AI on your flank route, potential contact with a flanking enemy element, or even a third party trying to insert themselves into your fight. When flanking, you have to take into consideration how long it will take you to get in position, how much noise you're going to make, and how close you have to be depending upon your weapons. All of these considerations, speed, silence, lethality, are in conflict with one another when you're flanking, and you have to ensure you balance each one in order to make your flank successful. It is important that you don't blow your flank. Do it right. Who you nominate to be the flanker on your team will mostly depend on how you have composed your team and who is in contact with the enemy. In part one of this guide, I outlined why it is good to have a mix of weapons capabilities and ranges on your team when gearing up. Ideally, you want to have the most lethal close range weapons to be your flanking force. This would be your shotguns, dual wielding pistols, and high rate of fire weapons, like Winnie with levering, or as I like to use, a crowning king. You should see him, Errol. Let's go, baby! <laughs> However, depending upon the terrain, it may not be possible to have your shotguns push forward without compromising your team. You may have to nominate your long-range weapons to go left or right to get the best angles to finish off enemy teams. However you choose to accomplish a flank, do it fast and aggressively while you have the initiative. There are several consumables and traits that can help you with flanking. Chaos bombs and blank fire decoys are great at distracting enemy teams and covering noise. Lightfoot is a god tier trait that will help you flank and move around undetected, even after the recent nerfs it received. Silent killer and silenced weapons will help you eliminate AI while reducing the risk of alerting nearby enemies. Whisper Smith allows you to swap equipment without being hurt. Vigilant also allows you to see traps in dark side, and Poacher allows you to disable these traps quietly. Both of them are very helpful when for flanking enemies in compounds. 
Also, simply walking greatly reduces the noise you produce when moving, so don't be afraid to do it. Strat number five, employ sound deception. Everything in Hunt, especially the sound design, is intended to give you clues about the locations of other hunters on the map and to give those same hunters clues as to where you are. Being able to read the environment is key to winning in Hunt. There are sound triggers all over the map, and if you know how to read the environment and listen to these cues, you can use this to your advantage. When you're in fights, avoid alerting triggers like crows, dogs, chickens, as they will give away your position. If your enemy does trigger these noises though, you can use them to cover your approach. When you are defending compounds or wooded areas, leave AI alone in strategic spots to alert you if enemies try to push from your flanks. Strat number six, use cover and concealment and know the difference between them. There are two types of ways to stop someone from shooting at you and hunt. Either you're in hard cover, stay behind a hill, concrete wall, berm, thick tree, or other impenetrable material, or you are concealed behind a penetrable barrier, such as a bush, wooden fence, wooden wall, thin tree, or sheet metal barrier. Cover will shield you from enemy sight and fire. Concealment will only shield you from the sight of the enemy. Stay close enough to cover so as to be able to pull back if necessary. If you're hit by an enemy, you can move into a concealed position to heal, but make sure you don't move in a predictable manner when doing so. Believe it or not, most of the buildings in Hunt are not places of cover. Wall banging is an effective strategy to take down enemies, and you should be looking to utilize it liberally. Take time to learn the different capabilities of ammo types when penning through different materials. It will produce more kills than you think, and honestly, it's just really, really fun. Weather also plays a large role in how you can stay concealed. Nighttime will make you harder to see in bushes and against dark backgrounds. Fog is going to force your long-range weapons to get closer, but it does present the opportunity for longer and wider flanks. Strat number seven, hit your shots. Okay, obviously in a shooter, aim will play a huge role in any fight. If you can't hit your targets and hunt, you're in trouble from the get-go. No amount of maneuvering, flanking, or deception will help you if you cannot effectively hit enemy hunters and get kills. Good aim provides you with more time and space to correct mistakes and survive. This is why players who are confident in their aiming ability can seemingly walk into a compound and just start blasting away, while the rest of the player base is desperately moving from cover to cover, just trying to land a few shots. Sometimes these aim gods can seem impossible to take down, but by employing some of the strats that I've outlined here, even the newbiest hunters can take advantage of an experienced hunter's overconfidence and secure a kill. Remember, the only bad fight is the one where where you don't get to live and tell the tale, so don't ever feel bad for winning however you can. Except when using a dolch. May you rot in hell for using this OP nightmare. If your aim is bad and you can't hit shots, take lots. You should feel free to use speculative fire to check and see if enemies are hiding in bushes or behind walls. You should be looking to finish your fights with little to no ammo left. Ammo scarcity is a thing in Hunt, but your ammunition is going to go farther than you think. You don't want to die because of the shot you didn't take. So use your ammo and use it liberally. Rest assured there are ways to improve your aim if you feel like you're lacking. There are several aim training programs out there that you can practice your hand-eye coordination. And over time as you play Hunt, you will get better at shooting. I guarantee this. So in tactical situations, take your time, breathe, hit your shots where you can, and adjust your play style to fit your aiming ability while you seek to improve. Strat number eight, use burning only as a last resort. All right, burning downed hunters used to be a huge debate in Hunt. However, since the choke bombs got changed from a consumable to a tool, burning has become less of a toxic dick move and more of a viable gameplay tactic for forcing players to fight. I do recommend that you only do this as a last resort, however. There's still some sense of honor around the bayou, at least I think that there is. My team and I, we won't typically burn bodies unless the enemy team refuses to push a fight. We generally don't burn down enemy hunters if the enemy team is not burning our down teammate. Burned out hunters also do not give your enemy any reason to stick around unless you're fighting over the bounty. They may just decide to leave if they have no reason to stay. You can use choke bombs to preemptively protect your teammates from burning, but these will expire after two minutes, so use that time wisely. The salve skin trait can also buy you some more time as it increases the time it takes to burn down hunters. Strat number nine, use your consumables. Newer hunters make this mistake more often than veterans, but you should not be dying with consumables in your pocket. Dynamite, hellfire bombs, traps, etc. all give you an advantage in combat situations. You should be looking to use these as soon as possible during a fight to secure some quick kills for your team or be using them to regain the initiative if you've lost them. Strat number 10, 
never peek twice. This strat is pretty self-explanatory, but I swear that people still do it out of sheer laziness. Never peek the same angle more than once. If you peek, shoot, and miss, go find another angle to look from because this spot is now being watched. As well, pay attention to where your partners are peeking. From. If they peek an angle, don't immediately peek the same angle. If you're running out of other places to peek, you might be in a bad position and it might be time to disengage and to find a new place to fight from. Peeking twice is just begging to be headshot. Don't do it unless you have no other choice. Strat number 11, bring a knife to a gunfight. Hunt is a unique game in that melee is a very viable way to approach fights. Due to the slow rate of fire of most weapons, melee fights are pretty common. Weapons like the Bomb Lance, Cav Saber, Combat Axe, and Knife strike fear into the hearts of hunters who see them coming at them. This is also why I recommend using Hunter Control Scheme, since every weapon, item, consumable has a melee animation. Keeping your melee on your left click and readily available in a fight is an advantage in my opinion. Don't be afraid to just pull your knife out and YOLO it in there. You will be pleasantly surprised with some of the results. Strat number 12, keep your morale high. Like in any sport, in gaming, it is important to keep the enemy out of your head. One of the most demoralizing things you can hear in Hunt is the sound of your teammate going down. I downed one. That's good. Oh. When these things happen, it's important to show some resilience and stay focused on what you can do to affect the outcome of the fight. As long as you're alive, there's always hope. Every so often, you're gonna run into a player who's gonna concertina bomb, poison bomb, and insta burn your down partner two seconds after they get the kill on them. Honestly, this tactic really makes me laugh because it tells me that that player doesn't really have faith in their skills in the game. It's almost like admitting that they suck. But even if you do end up losing to a team that plays like this, don't carry it with you into the next game. It's just best to let these things go and focus on your game. If you get griefers over the in-game voice feature, immediately turn that communication off and start focusing on taking them down. Strat 13. There are no strats. At some point in every fight, there's gonna be a moment where it devolves into a complete chaotic mess and you're just gonna have to let your inner demon take over in order to survive. One of the best things about Hunt is that there are just some situations you cannot prepare for. All the strats go out the window and you have to rely on your own personal creativity to win. These are truly the moments I look forward to in Hunt. The messier, the better in my opinion. Win or lose, it's always a blast taking down at enemies in a desperate fight. Hey, I want to thank you very much for watching my final video on positioning and hunt. I hope you found something in either of these videos that can, you can take into the bayou with you. If you feel like I've left something out or you have a subject you would like to see me cover in the future, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications. Also, feel free to stop by the stream to let me know what you think. I'll see you next time.